Here's one thing I do want to mention about writer's block. At least I wasn't affected that bad after watching Traces of Death. Steve, as always, from Shock Extreme Productions, and I have another movie review for you guys today. And today is going to be for Dead Alive Productions. I know Dead Alive doesn't do uh, releases anymore, um, but I was floored when I found this VHS tape, and I knew I had to review this. Like I said, the film was put out by Dead Alive Productions, directed by Chris Lamont, and that is writer's block, Truth or Dare Part 2. This film unfortunately is only on VHS, hopefully one day there will be a DVD edition of it. One thing before we get into this, I do want to thank director Chris Lamont for signing my copy for me. Amazing, I love having this in my collection. Thanks again, Chris. The film revolves around an author named Jack who wrote his first book, The Woodcutter, and his publicist wants him to come up with another book as soon as possible to tie in with the movie release of the adaptation of The Woodcutter. His publicist only gives him a few days to come up with three chapters, and as struggling as Jack has to come up with ideas, he is looking around in his house, um, unboxing uh, boxes because they recently moved to a new house, and he stumbles across a room that was boarded off, and he comes across a box loaded with all sorts of VHS tapes, including Traces of Death Parts 1 and 2, and some other things. The uh, Wicked Games, Tim Ritter's film, is in there as well. And he also comes across a book which contains a diary of a kid named Elliot. In this scene, we hear a narration from Elliot, as well as some flashback scenes talking about how he's playing a game with this pen pal friend of his, and they're playing Truth or Dare, and as the uh, diary keeps getting uh, longer and longer, Elliot is asking his pen pal to do more crazy stuff like beat up people and even kill some people. Jack finds the story super intriguing and decides to write his new book based off of um, Elliot's diary. The publicist loves Jack's new book, which is called Truth or Dare in the film, and it becomes one of the New York Times best-selling books. Things are going great for Jack until one day he receives a letter in his P.O. box from somebody that says, I dare you to tell the truth about my book. And that's when things start getting weird. He starts getting phone calls with no answers, just heavy metal music in the background. And it's driving Jack crazy to the point where he just doesn't want to do anything with Truth or Dare anymore. Now my thoughts. For a shot on video film, it is one of the most well done but underrated films of the subgenre. It doesn't have the crazy characters like video violence or the extreme gore like Cannibal Camp Out or Zombie Bloodbath. Writer's Block is something that has what many shot on video films don't have. The film is shot well, the sound is great, which is one thing that a lot of filmmakers, especially filmmakers that would make films on video, did not understand. That sound was everything. I'll say this again because it applies for me as well. Sound is everything. The characters are all likable. Jack, his wife, the publicist, Elliot, all of them are super lovable characters. Every actor in the film gave an outstanding performance, A-plus job overall on the acting. The gore, like I said before, it's not a gore fest, but as opposed to, there are regular kill scenes in the movie. There's stabbings, uh, there's slit throats, but there is a lot of creative death scenes in this film. The death scenes in this film is a complete nostalgia trip to shot on video gore. It is perfect, what I call video gore. It is outstanding, the gore is fantastic, the kills are fantastic, 
in general, everything about this movie is fantastic. Not to give a lot away with the death scenes, but my favorite by far is where Elliot lays somebody on a block of ice, and inside of the block of ice is a razor blade. Elliot turns up the heat in the house to the point where the razor blade melts, and once it gets far enough to the blade, it slits the person's throat. The one cool thing I have to say about the killer Elliot in this film is in almost every scene he's in, he's wearing a Traces of Death t-shirt, he has Traces of Death VHS tapes, and that was something that I thought was really cool, an actual film showing off Traces of Death. I mean, really, who else would have Traces of Death shown so much in their films or even in their videos? Oh yeah, that's me. For a recommendation, I would definitely give this a go out, get it now. It is a little tricky to find. I really hope one day somebody will put this one out on DVD. Um, they do sell it on Amazon, I know, on VHS, and that seems to be the only place you could really see it is on Amazon and on the Dead Alive Productions VHS. Especially for any shot on video fan, any fan of Dead Alive Productions, this is one I strongly urge that you see this because you will love it and it will definitely be one of your favorite shot on video films. To compare this film with The Burning Moon, another big budget or high quality production shot on video film, this is right up there with it. The production value is so high for a shot on video film and it is incredible. If you're able to find yourself a copy on VHS, I highly recommend checking this one out. Trust me, you will not be disappointed. Anyways, guys, that was my review. Hope you all enjoyed. Once again, thank you, Chris Lamont, for signing this for me. I absolutely love it. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up button. If you dislike it, hit that thumbs down button. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, whatever it is you guys do. Once again, my name is Steve from Shock Extreme Productions, and until next time, see you all later.